Hi, this is your lesson that will teach you everything you ever wanted to know about writing a hypothesis. Aren't you glad you are in our EVSP 500 class? Well, aren't you? And this is just week two. You're up for a real treat. Step one is to determine the topic and the application for your hypothesis. Our topic for this course is whether global warming causes a specific type of natural disaster in a specific geographical location in the U.S. Why did I choose global warming? <clears throat> it is because this is a research class and there is an abundance of scholarly resources. This is important in graduate research to choose a topic with a large amount of research to draw upon. The topic determines what your hypothesis is all about and tells you how to word your hypothesis. The application for this course is to prepare for a proposal. That is the week 8 assignment. The importance of narrowing your topic down from general to specific, from broad to narrow, is step 2. The particulars of the topic you want to investigate is important and you will want to bring the topic down to a size you can handle in this eight-week class. Whether you are dealing in abstract ideas or with tangible research, you can't conquer the world all at once. Break it down into a one-step-at-a-time size pieces. Step three. What is a good hypothesis, you might ask? Is it your assumption or explanation of why or how something occurs? You are proposing an explanation or defending an argument. In order to determine your answer, your hypothesis, you must first determine your question. What question do you want to answer by this experiment, research, or essay? Let's take for our purpose the question, why do people get bad haircuts? Step four, decide what your answer to the question is. In our previous slide, we wanted to decide why people got bad haircuts. It is because they can't afford to get a great to go to a good salon to get a great cut. Perhaps they don't know they have a bad haircut. Or is it a bad haircut is the only matter of preference. It's what they really like to have. Write down your best answer to the question that you have proposed. Step 5. A good hypothesis is simple, concise, and boldly written. Look at the answer you have written. That is your current hypothesis. Is it wordy, cluttered up with unnecessary adjectives, confusing, wishy-washy? That's the most likely candidate. <coughs> Reword as needed to form a statement that is brief and understandable. People end up with really bad haircuts because they don't know that they have bad haircuts or they don't know how to get good ones. That's really wordy, right? You can rephrase this statement to become, people have bad haircuts because they don't recognize good haircuts. That's a much tighter statement. That's what you're looking for in your hypothesis, a nice, tight statement. Step six, a good hypothesis takes a clear side. Your research or writing will determine if the side you chose is the right one. At this point, the purpose of your hypothesis is to make your claim boldly. Don't tiptoe around, be wishy-washy. Decide what you think and then say it. If your current hypothesis is dancing around the real heart of what you think, trim it up and work it over until it says exactly what you mean to say. Seven. A good hypothesis uses clear, defined terms. If any of the terms you are using in your hypothesis are ambiguous, Either reword or include a brief clarification of what you mean by the particular term. For example, people have bad haircuts, unflattering or unkempt, because they don't recognize good haircuts. Only do this if the term is not one that would be clear to everyone. Don't unnecessarily clutter up your hypothesis with definitions of well-known words or concepts. Assume that everyone knows what you mean. For instance, when you say global warning, they understand that that's not the same as climate change, right? Step A. A good hypothesis is testable. There is no way to go out and test the truth of the statement you are making. It won't work as a hypothesis. If you can test it, it will work. A testable hypothesis gives you direct guidance for your next steps in completing your project. Once you determine that your hypothesis is testable, you probably know how to test it. 
So you move is to start testing and find out all your good hypothesis is good enough to become a theory. Now that you have a good idea of how to construct a good hypothesis, create one for this week's assignment. So now you have a good idea, construct that good hypothesis, and move on for, for assignment number two. That's all for now. Talk soon.